Hello again, Gastronauts. Mutton here again. Now, many of you uh, will have been to Spain at various times on your holidays or on business or whatever, but the northwest corner, Galicia, is probably a little bit that's off your radar. But it does happen to have probably the best meat and the best seafood in Spain. So, on today's vlog, I'm going to show you five things that you should be eating when you're in Galicia. So having been here for a few days in Vigo, I found it's actually quite a young city, a very youthful city, and uh, I may well be the only British tourist in town. That's not a reason not to visit here, because it is full of life and full of great food. I mean, just look at the seafront here, or the marina front, it is absolutely bursting with life. In fact, on Saturday night it was absolutely heaving. So, the first thing we really have to try is the local classic. Pulpo a la gallega or pulpo fera. Galician style octopus. And when I first arrived here, I took a stroll along here and I spotted a place called Bar Comercio. And guess what? They had a stall preparing it outside the restaurant. So, I've just got to try it here. So I've ordered a tap of pulpo and there's nothing else to accompany it other than Albarino, the local white wine and my favourite white wine in Spain. I just can't wait to try this. Okay, bring on the octopus. And this is slipping down a little bit too nicely uh, so I'm going to uh, maybe have to order some more. Isn't it great to see what you've just ordered being prepared right in front of you? Uh, chopping away at that octopus tentacle. And uh, it is a great food and it shouldn't be rubbery. So um, yet again I say don't be put off by having had bad stuff in the past. If you come somewhere like this it's pretty likely to be good. I mean they're not going to have this stall out all the time selling rubbery horrible stale octopus are they? Okay, it's bueno, 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 with little bits of potato underneath, but I prefer it this way, more octopus, less carbs. And something else that's really traditional here is that you don't eat it with a knife or fork or your hands, they give you little toothpicks, so you... Just what the doctor ordered. Well lads, the evening has got off to a cracking start, but will it be more seafood or will it be more fish? There will be more wine, of course. I feel sorry for people who've had squid, octopus, cuttlefish in places where it's been sitting, well, sitting around for a while or been sitting in a freezer for ages because uh, this is as fresh as the proverbial daisy, this stuff is. And, of course, this is coming first because it is the number one local dish. Anyway, I'm going to finish this off and uh, we'll then move on to the next place for the next dish. So, wow, what a great start that was. I mean, I don't know whether the guy was a fisherman or just a street hawker with his cart and they have an arrangement with the restaurant, but that was great stuff. He's got great quality produce, cooked nicely. 
in a nice location provided by the restaurant. This is what the crowds like to see. Now every Spanish town has its old town cascavier or whatever it's called in Galician or Gallego and they are very good in Spain at making sure that buildings sort of keep to some traditional architectural style so you don't get sort of ugly modern high-rise buildings messing up something that's aesthetically pretty pretty. Now into this little square in the Plaza de Constitución and even on a Sunday evening which is traditionally the quietest of evenings in Spain it is really busy here. Now I'm looking for a place called the Taberna a Piedra which is supposedly not too expensive but has great food and I'm prepared to wait for a table if necessary the reviews are that good and that is something I like as well a place where you can sit outside eat and drink and watch the football on a big screen should be more of that I think so here we are let us hope and pray that I can get a table I'll sit inside if necessary so I did get a table I had to go indoors but since I've been vaccinated to the hilt I don't mind and look at all those octopus legs pretty I've already had one on this video so this is an absolute treasure trove of seafood uh, <laughs> mussels razor clams zamborinos we had those the other day Berberetchus, I think those are cockles. Various types of prawns, small fried fish, chinchas, not quite sure what they are, but I'll find out. And um, bocarinas and vinegar, you get those all over Spain. White anchovies and vinegar, squid, octopus, cuttlefish. And they do actually have meat for those who want it, but I mean, when you see all that seafood on the menu, you kind of get the uh, feeling that this little meat section is for our friends from Yorkshire who uh, might not take the fish. And of course, it had to be Alberino again. Quick slurp. Well, we have to keep a semblance of balance and help. Ah, the razor clams have arrived. Now I was about to wax up lyrical about the salad and those have obviously come straight from the grill to my plate or to my table. Navajas or razor clams are most definitely something that are mainly caught off the north and west coast of Spain and other parts of the Atlantic but are a particular speciality here and I love them. And as always with the prime mutton Shellfish and lemon go together like peaches and cream. I don't mind lime either, by the way, although uh, probably best used with lime if there's a bit of chilli involved as well. Mm. Beautiful, really beautiful. These are as good as I've had in money. Oh, you're just putting face on your videos there. Basically, my rule is, if they're not good, I just don't post a review. And these are very good. And man, they slip down so nicely. Can I wonder sometimes, has anybody ever made a menu just out of clam? Now, whilst these are called razor clams, and I must avoid these juices getting into my lap, they don't taste like normal clams much at all. But they are probably part of the same family. In fact, I know they are part of the same family. But these are clams on steroids. In fact, these are so good I could sit there all day eating them. Soft and tender shells, not rubbery again at all. Anybody who tells you the texture is a bit funny, ignore them. All those flavours of the sea, olive oil and a bit of citrus, you cannot go wrong. I did once get sick on razor clams, but if they're gritty and rubbery, you should probably not have them. That's uh, the warning I got, which I ignored, but uh, these are the business. And that deserves a bit more alberino. Now that the waiter assured me that something that's typical and seasonal and fresh are the local sardines, so we had to order those, didn't we? So let's pan down and take a look at those beauties. And we couldn't have a meal in Galicia without the local favourite vegetable, pimentos de padron. Now, some of them are supposed to be spicy, but I can't remember the last time I had a spicy. I think I've had one or two spicy ones ever, but 
they're actually great as an aperitif or a beer snack, but uh, equally good with food, I suppose. Now, one word of warning, though, these are very, very salty, so if you're not keen on the flavour of salt or you have a bee in your bonnet about salt with blood pressure and what have you, then maybe these aren't for you. But one thing I will add is that in hot countries, you need the salt. If you go around not taking salt, you'll uh, find you'll be uh, cramping faster than a Bolton Wanderers footballer in the 90th minute. So you don't mess about with these, you just pick them up with your hand, take a bite and enjoy the flavour. And now for those much vaunted sardines. Look at that little beauty, look at that. Now, obviously we have to taste them and make sure that they pass mutton's quality control. Now I did order a salad with this and the quality of the fish and shells is so good that um, it's tempting to be salad dodgy here, but I do actually like salad, so uh, I will have some. And I might add, by the way, they must be in season because everywhere I've walked around, there's some people eating these by the bucket. Though. And with the flavour of the fish being so strong, you don't want to mess about with it. Just a bit of olive oil and salt, that'll be fine. Grilled on the plate into mutton's mouth. Now, sardines do have a very, very strong fishy flavour, so you've got to be really into your fish to like it. But one thing I'll point out, the two ways of eating them, one you just eat the whole lot, the bones are so small that it doesn't matter, or you just pull the meat apart gently until you have this little skeleton left. And that is worse, another quick slurp of course. And another one. And for those of you saying, oh, what about the heads, but in the heads, you keep going on about the heads. Well, I like these heads as well, but these are very, very strongly flavoured, so they really are for people who like that strong, bitter, fishy, deep sea flavour that you get from the heads of things. Although the heads of prawns are a lot milder, this is very strong, but I love it. And it goes without saying, this is the right medicine to take with it. Mutton is racing into form tonight. I was thinking of bringing you a bit of meat, but I don't know. You're in the biggest port in Spain, or the biggest fishing port. Stick to the seafood. Sorry, Mr. Miles. And finally, the last one. I mean, sometimes you wish a meal never came to the end. Well, it won't, because I've still got some wine and things to follow. So there we are. What a meal. What a meal. Simple local ingredients, beautifully prepared. And I have to say, the sardines really were outstanding. It's not something I order most, and I'm so grateful that they recommended them. And finally, I have shown it before, but I'll show it again because it is the classic dessert here, and it is not actually that sweet. It is sinful for me, but it's not that sinful. The Tarte de Santiago, an almond tart. So there we are, the classic Galician almond tart, a little bit of icing sugar on the top and basically a tart made of almonds and it has the same texture as eating a slightly firm piece of marzipan but there's a lot more to it flavour wise. And for those of you who like port, I would say that would make a good accompaniment for this dessert. Now, as always, the coffee report. Now, sad to report, there's no crema on here, and the taste, I've just had a little taste, and it's okay. So this is a classic small restaurant that you find all over Galicia in this part of Spain. The grill in the back, the bar, the masses of bottles of wine up in the ceiling. Obviously plenty of Alberino, the local white wine, which I had myself, and the usual selection of spirits and coffee. The bill is not chunky when you come here, the food is very good. So, there we are, gastronauts, ladies, gents. We've had our five dishes from Galicia that you can't miss. You must try that octopus, the Popa Gallego, or Popa Fera. I can't pronounce Galician, I can't even pronounce Spanish for Christ's sake. We've had the pimentos de padron, which you'll see on Spanish menus in a lot of 
parts of the world, but that is a Galician speciality. We've had the sardines, they were beautiful. The razor clams, well, they were like butter in my mouth. And then we had the most traditional local dessert, the almond tart. So as often happens in restaurants in this part of the world, being offered a little free digesty from the house, and I have gone for the aguardiente, which is a type of grappa. And they do that for all diners from what I could see. So here's cheers for that. Oh, that's uh, stuff and stuff. That's how the evening doesn't spin out of control as it can on a mutton tour. Please like, share and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. I can assure you, you can't get better and fresher seafood than you can in Galicia. And you certainly can't beat a bit of mutton.